Ladies and gents, welcome back. The political establishment types are losing their mind at the moment, trying to spin a new narrative. This, of course, is the federal government, but also the federal government branch that we all know as the mainstream media news. <laughs> They're trying to um, stow the seed of discord uh, in the conversation when it revolves around premiers of their provinces, trying to establish the powers that they have to withstand federal overreach. Now, this, of course, I'm talking about Daniel Smith in in Alberta with the new Alberta Sovereignty Act. There was a press conference yesterday. Well, let's just get to what she had to say in the beginning here. Canada's provinces and territories are part of a larger whole, but are not subordinate to it. As Albertans, we love our Canada deeply. This is our home, and we are honored to be contributing members. But the way Ottawa has treated the province, most especially Alberta, is unacceptable. Albertans are demanding action to restore a relationship that respects Alberta's sovereign areas of provincial jurisdiction as defined by the Constitution. The Canadian Constitution was intended to create a respectful union where the provinces would have their own areas of jurisdiction free from interference with autonomy over the laws and policies within their provinces' own spheres of influence. Yet this nation has not always operated smoothly. Over the years, there have been a shamefully large number of missed opportunities for shared growth and prosperity between the provinces and the federal government. In particular, a long and painful history of mistreatment and constitutional overreach from Ottawa has for decades caused tremendous frustration for Albertans. In response, we are finally telling the federal government, no more. It's time to stand up for Alberta. Bill 1, the Alberta Sovereignty Within a United Canada Act, is a first step in standing up for Albertans and pushing Ottawa back into its own lane. When passed, this legislation will create a constitutional legal framework for Alberta to push back against federal interference and en encroachment. The federal government is actively attempting to landlock our natural resources penalize our energy and agriculture producers, cut fertilizer use, control the delivery of health, education, child care, and other social programs with strings attached funding, and confiscate legally owned firearms. And that's just a few examples. The framework provided under the Act will allow Alberta's Legislative Assembly to identify constitutional concerns with a specific federal program or piece of legislation, and then recommend a measured and appropriate response to prevent or frustrate that federal intrusion. Our province will not enforce unconstitutional or harmful Ottawa policies or laws in Alberta. Albertans come first. Always. Always, always. And that's that's great to hear from a premier of a province. And I, I hope that it actually inspires other premiers and other provinces to follow suit uh, when it comes to government overreach from the federal level. Now, the press, the presser <laughs> went into questions and the questions droned on far too long. And, and I think I have the perfect summary of that here. Danielle Smith, when a court issues a ruling, we will respect that ruling, <laughs> to which reporters asked. So just to be clear, you're going to make up your own laws with no oversight. <laughs> it's hard It's hard to really um, uh, get the, the gist of how it felt. And, and to put it in a video, it would take too long. I'll leave a link in the description to the press conference. But they droned on and on and on about these particulars about the law that uh, the answers were clear, but they it seemed like they were pushing for a narrative that just did not exist. And, and it felt very much that way during the presser. But here's here's uh, here's a little more. We've been ignored for 10 years. The uh, the former uh, premier, Rachel Notley, tried the climate leadership plan to get a better relationship with Ottawa. It failed. Uh, pr uh, former Premier uh, Jason Kenney tried to have a collaborative relationship with Stephen Gibbeau in Quebec to get LNG export. It failed. We put forward an equalization referendum to try to start a conversation to change the relationship with Ottawa. It failed. So now we're going to try something new. I think we've got their attention. We've got their attention because I know with the relationship that we're now seeing develop with the, with the federal government finally recognizing that they cannot pass carp launch power over our natural resources, that they have recognized our industrial pricing program around industrial emissions for CO2, that they have accepted that natural resources fall within our jurisdiction. I think that that begins a constructive relationship, and that's what this was all about. You do not have that, cha that relationship change without a push. This was a push, and here's the point. I hope we never have to use this bill. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. And it really, it comes down to that. So the the idea behind this is premiers have tried in, in past times to give the federal government the nudge. Hey, you're encroaching on our on our jurisdiction. You're encroaching on our people of our province. And you're you're usurping more powers than you actually have allowed to you. And uh, while well, this is finally a pushback that means something, and this is this is where the critics are not very happy about it, and even even uh, Prime Minister himself. This is from CTV News. Nothing off the table when it comes to Alberta Sovereignty Act. PM Trudeau says. Prime Minister Trudeau says while he's not looking for a fight with Alberta, the federal government is not taking anything off the table when it comes to how many, how it may respond to Alberta Premier's Daniel Smith new Sovereignty Act. In quotes, they, they always do this, this, or they call it a so-called something. We know that the exceptional powers that the premier is choosing to give Alberta government in by bypassing Alberta legislature. So this this again is uh, this is the Prime Minister Trudeau misrepresenting what the actual uh, act is, is causing a lot of eyebrows to raise in Alberta. Trudeau told reporters on his way to the Liberal caucus meeting on Wednesday. It sounds like it almost sounds feels like he wrote all the subsequent articles that are coming up. We're going to see how this plays out. I'm not going to take anything off the table, but I'm also not looking for a fight. We want Alberta. We want to continue to be there to deliver for Albertans. I, I think what he means is he wants Albertans to continue to pay Quebec and the maritime provinces in um, in equalization payments because and, and that's 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 a big issue that's a big issue for the western provinces uh, in the in the idea of um, well they work hard and and they're paying for uh, other programs that they don't necessarily may not necessarily want to be a part of but um, what this what this act is actually doing is it's just getting the federal government to at holding them at bay it's it's a power within the province to say well uh the federal government's coming for you citizens of alberta but we've got your back essentially now of course uh the discord being sowed by again C ctv news edmonton alberta not proceeding with it with premier's bill premier smith's bill to protect covid19 vac unvaccinated and this is uh an article and it's amazing. I'll leave a link in the description for this one. This one is a roundabout just hit piece on on the premiere and and what her plans are because she didn't immediately jump on the um, a piece of legislation to um, ban the discrimination of unvaccinated people. She wasn't able to immediately hit on that. And she said she's working on it, but she they're, they're trying to uh, get conservatives to go against Daniel Smith. That's that's the main purpose here. Don Martin from again, CTV News. Daniel Smith's antics suggest she could soon claim the title of Alberta's briefest premier. And this is funny because these are people who are partisans. They they have no they have no state they have no stake in in whether um, she is <laughs> in Alberta or not. These are CTV News Ottawa people. It's it's really funny. Toronto Star again another very very partisan organization amid criticism. Alberta government seems to try to allow ally concerns about the amount of power to the Sovereignty Act will concentrate in the United Conservative Party's cabinet, but such reassurance was met only with more questions and criticism. Again, questions and criticism from the establishment types. Now, Maxime Bernier tweeted this one out yesterday, a, a piece from the National Post. Surprise, Danielle Smith's Sovereignty Act is very likely constitutional. Provinces are not obligated to enforce federal laws. This is this is the case here. Uh I'll just jump to this one point. It's hardly the constitutional breaking plan, which Smith's critics, myself, was included. This The author of this was in, actually criticized this at first, warned about during the, her campaign for the UKIP leadership, the, criticization, or the characterization of the Sovereignty Act as a threat to the rule of law, which some critics are still expounding, is simply wrong. Jesse Hard Terry a Toronto lawyer with expertise in federalism says he has been frustrated by the debate around the Sovereignty Act because the proposal 
as currently written appears to be constitutional based on existing law. The government can seek assistance from the other, sorry, the one government can seek assistance from the other, can cooperate with the other, but they can't require the other to implement and to enforce their laws. He told me by phone Wednesday morning. So the Supreme Court has never endorsed that. And in fact, there is there's decisions that, sorry, there's decisions where the court says there is no positive obligation on a province or federal government to cooperate with the other. And that's that's where we stand on this. Um, <laughs> of course, let me know in the comment section down below, where do you stand on this? Do you think that the provinces should have the power to tell the federal government to get lost when it comes to laws that are that are extrajudicial i mean they're they're going above and beyond what are the the roles of government in in the case of uh climate change legislation and pushing that on farmers to mitigate the amount of nitrogen in their fields seems very arbitrary it doesn't seem to follow what uh, the industry and and science actually De declares as well it shows through evidence and and peer review uh that the farmers are, are doing things to actually mitigate these uh issues that are being uh, questioned by people like stephen gibault who rules on high from his um from his ivory tower <laughs> he's a climate activist and he's uh he's from an or originally from an organization that uh, puts spikes in trees, and that's uh, that's terrible. If you don't know about that, that's uh, eco terrorism, where they uh, put spikes in trees in with the efforts of if a logger uh, comes by with a chainsaw, that he may uh, have his chainsaw blow up in his hands. Now, uh, that is the organization of uh, Greenpeace, where Stephen Gibault had been actually arrested in in, <laughs> in his efforts to do things with them. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> At what point can the provinces say to the federal government, buzz off, it's none of your business, get out of our province? And uh, that's that's the big question today. And uh, well, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.